Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to host active pieces with Coolify. So the prerequisite is you're going to need to install Coolify with um, one of your uh, servers. So Coolify has a pretty good documentation and so you just go to the installation section and um, run the command, I believe, that this one here and it basically installs everything for you. There's also some great uh, videos on YouTube on how to do that. Once you have your Coolify instance set up, um, then uh, this is where we're going to now jump into adding specific services to your existing server. So the first one is going to be active pieces we're going to do, and we're going to, this is going to be part of a series where we're going to go through all of the suggested services here, all the way down to W, so WordPress at the end there. And uh, today, this, we're going to work on active pieces. So let's get, uh, let's get to it. So the first thing you're going to want to do is um, you're going to want to add a project. So I have a couple of projects here. Um, I've also got two servers. We're gonna, I'm going to be using this one, the test chef, test chef server. So in projects, we're going to add a new one. I'm going to call it active pieces. I've never actually used this software. This is my first time doing this. So it's going to be a good um, uh, intro just to show you that you really don't need to know much about self-hosting in general. Coolify simplifies a lot of things for you. And also a lot of these projects make deployment very simple. So let's uh, click into active pieces here and see what it is that we have to do. So here it, it says one click setup. So typically what this means is um, it's already set up inside the services here. So you don't really actually have to do much. So we're going to click on the active pieces service and now we're going to choose our server I'm going to choose test chef and uh, now we can choose our uh, service name so I'm just going to leave it as active pieces without the extra uh, string here and then let's have a look so you can see we have some environment variables here uh, well but that to enter so we've got the postgres uh, SQL user database name and password to enter and it's pre-filled here. I didn't actually do anything. I suppose I can change these values um, however I want. Uh, I'm going to leave them like this for now because I don't see a point in changing it. And I'm just going to peek at the compost file just to see what it kind of looks like just out of curiosity. And it does look um, kind of um, intimidating at first but it's it's pretty simple to understand what's going on. If you've never worked with Docker Compose, um, it's basically a file that's going to set up an environment where your where um, code is going to run. It's almost like a machine. Um, it contains all the information for a machine. Uh, it works with Docker, so it's not just a standalone by itself. So it needs a Docker image or um, a docker file that uh, that it runs with and the docker image is basically um, that environment that I was talking about that's kind of like encompassed encompasses uh, the machine that's that's running code already it's almost like a computer let's say so a mini computer we'll say so it, it has a mini computer here let's say and then it's got environment variables that it um, that it needs and it looks like the only ones that it, it really needs us to enter in here is this but there's probably some more environment variables here um, that it that it requires but it looks like it's also pre-filled so we're going to ignore this piece and we're going to stay in configuration and we are just going to click save because I just changed the service name and deploy so let's go ahead and deploy oh, yeah, hold on before I do that um, you can see here it still is using a different string for the service uh, when it's going to be deployed. So I'm going to click um, settings there and I'm going to change the string here because I don't want it to be some super long string. And then I'm going to save. So active uh, pieces.testchef.xyz is going to be the domain 
that uh, this is going to be deployed with. And uh, so now I've saved it. Let's deploy. And now it's going to read that Docker Compose file that we saw. And it's going to run the code. So let's wait a little bit here. And there we go. I think that was the last of it. It's actually quite a lot going on in this um, in this uh, Docker Compose file. And you can see here there's a there's couple of containers. So there's uh, one here and another one for Postgres, another one for Reddit. So basically these are again like mini computers. Well, I don't know if that's the right analogy. Somebody who's better at Postgres maybe can leave a comment and uh, sorry, not Postgres, but uh, Docker in general can leave a comment on what exactly the the right analogies would be for these. So, so container, image, uh, volume is easy. That's basically just storage. Uh, so yeah, we've got multiple containers. So the Postgres, the Redis, and um, active pieces, and some uh, storage. And so let's have a look at our deployed app. And so now we are it's successfully been deployed and we can try and sign up here. And so now that we've signed up, we can actually use active pieces. So I've never actually used this software before. From what I understand, it helps with um, automation. So kind of like a um, Zapier or uh, N8N, I believe. So here we go. We got all in one automation tool designed to be extensible through TypeScript, which is kind of interesting. So maybe I'll do another video on like how this has actually been used, how I've used it to do a simple flow. Uh, but for now, I think this is going to be good enough just to show you how it's very simple to set up um, on your Coolify, um, uh, through Coolify, I should say. And uh, we'll leave it at that. And if there's interest, then I'll do another video on, on uh, more on how to use active pieces. And there you go.